It's Monday, August 4th, 2014, and let's talk about what happened this weekend over at xdadevelopers.com. First up in device updates, it seems that Verizon finally got around to rolling out that KitKat update to the LG GPad 8.3 this weekend. This bumps the version from 4.2.2 to 4.4.2, also bringing along that not code feature that we've seen in most of the other LG KitKat updates. If you just can't wait to get this update over the air, the file has been captured and made available through the forum, but keep in mind that if you want to flash this over to your device, you can't do it through Twerp. In fact, you've gotta be running stock recovery and stock firmware at the moment so I wouldn't even think about upgrading yet if you're not running those things. Obviously, just keep an eye on the forum thread. I'm sure there will be more work done on this over time, and it's possible that other methods to flash it will be made available. Next up, I've spent a lot of time over the last few weeks talking about Android Wear devices, ROMs, apps, all sorts of stuff like that. But I saw a story pop up this weekend about a previous generation smartwatch getting some love, so I thought I'd go ahead and mention that. With the Wear devices, getting turn-by-turn -turn navigation on it is a snap, really painless, but on older devices like the Samsung Gear 2, wasn't quite so simple. That's why XDA Junior member Drashko put together an app called DMA NaviWatch for the Gear 2. This app pulls the Google navigation notifications off your device and displays them on the watch face, so it's actually pretty straightforward. If you're a Gear 2 owner and this sounds interesting to you because a lot of people want that navigation and they don't want to have to pull their device out, head on over to the Samsung Gear Apps page and search for it. Now moving in a completely different direction, a fairly nasty vulnerability popped up this weekend that's actually been in the Android source code since 2010. This bug lets apps pretend to be signed by trusted providers and they get loaded into the device on many different ways. For example, an app could exploit the vulnerability and then impersonate Google Wallet or PayPal or something in order to gain access to your financial data. Not fun. Fortunately, as they say, there's an exposed module for that. XDA recognized contributor Tongues20 put together an exposed module that fixes the hole by forcing certificates to be properly checked all along the path. And if you're still unsure about his method, the source code for it is available over on GitHub, so you can always go check it out for yourself. You know I'm a huge fan of the open source stuff. And actually, speaking of Git, apparently when Google pushed that Android Wear source into Git recently, we must have overlooked a few things about it. According to an article that showed up on the portal, they actually included def configs for several different platforms along with with Android Wear, also including the MSM 8974, which just happens to be used in the OnePlus One, the HTC M8, as well as the Nexus 5. These new def configs could actually provide a better path for getting a newer kernel version on these devices. That is, up until the newer kernel version 3.10 actually gets pushed out alongside Android L. So if you're interested in seeing what's out there, seeing what other devices might be supported, head on over to that Google Git page, which is linked to in the portal post. And to wrap things up, two little bits of XDA specific news. As of this weekend, it's been officially announced that MediaTek is going to be sponsoring XDA DevCon this year as a senior recognized sponsor. Between this announcement and the recent announcement they made that they're going to be more open and more developer friendly, it's actually nice to see where MediaTek's heading, and I'm curious to see what happens from here out. Also this weekend, one other video was posted to XDA Developer TV, wherein TK showed us how to root the OnePlus One, as well as unlocking the bootloader and installing a custom recovery. But you know what? That's going to be about all from me for today. As always, you can find the links to the stories I talked about down in the video description, as well as the links to my YouTube channels if you're interested. Remember, if you like this video, leave a like down below the video and subscribe to receive our content as soon as it becomes available. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.